So the first introduction to make today is to Professor Tim Whitley, who is the Managing Director of uh, um, Applied Research in BT. Um, and Tim's going to, I'm very pleased to say, give us the introduction to the day, uh, give us uh, the background and the context for the work, and the research behind it. And I'm certain that nobody in BT needs uh, to be introduced to Tim. So I'm going to hand straight over to Tim and uh, over to you, Tim. Thank you. Oh, good morning, everybody. Of course, I should begin by welcoming you all and um, noting that we had hoped that we would be welcoming, welcoming you at the place I'm going to uh, a little bit later today, which is our labs at Adastral Park, BT's Engineering HQ. Um, and we'd hoped you would all be in that room that looks sad and empty, which is our exhibition hall. Uh, but we thought we'd put some pictures of your lovely faces uh, on a slide, or at least something emblematic of your lovely faces. Um, and and the, the purpose of convening here is, you know, there is, apart from, uh, briefing, uh, which is part and parcel of what today is, the real purpose is to get a conversation going. We're going to take you through in the, the conference today um, progress and give you a glimpse into uh, a very important programme uh, that BT has been participating with our academic colleagues. We've got 30 colleagues and friends from uh, four of the UK's top universities on this, uh, this conference. Um, and of course, if they're top UK universities, that means they're top global university. So we're very pleased to have our, our academic friends on here as well. Over 100 uh, friends and colleagues from around BT. Um, and it's all about bringing together multiple experts from multiple domains. That's what we're trying to do here with the purpose of really trying to make sure the next year of this program is even more impactful and that the conference, because we are going to get you all together, you will get an invite, um, uh, hopefully early in the new year for us to get together and to really try and get the most out of that conference. So definitely don't think of this as a sit back thing. Think of it as a lean forward and engage thing. So a, a little bit of context, primarily, I think, for, for our academic partners on the on the, the call here, but also maybe for some of the newer people in BT about the way BT thinks about research and innovation. Uh, we have this idea of purposeful innovation and it, it's sort of captured by this rather funny diagram here, but it's dead simple and it goes to the heart of what we're doing today. It's about taking an interest as an organization in that, that wonderful world of new knowledge, you know, science, the sort of curiosity or discovery led science that um, that uh, universities tend to lead for, uh, for nations and which certainly is the case in this country. Taking an interest in that, but also being passionate about engineering, you know, real world practical engineering. So, yes, patenting, yes, publications in peer reviewed journals. Bottom line, engineering, doing things, you know, repeatably. But engineering is also about economics. It's about commercials. It's about regulation. It's about markets. It's about all the sort of things that the BT people on this call are, are experts in. But the most important thing is purpose. It's got to do something useful, useful for a customer, useful for a nation. And the reason this chart looks a bit aged is because it talks to BT's origins. You know, BT is the oldest telecoms company in the world. You know, our corporate history goes back to 1846. But actually, our origin goes back to a collaboration between an academic, Charles Wheatstone, the guy on the left in that picture, and a bloke today we call an entrepreneur, William Fothersgill Cook. Um, they had a passion for cutting edge science, which was electricity and magnetism. These were contemporaries of Faraday, and they saw a way to change the world through harnessing that new knowledge. So our very origin story actually begins with what we're doing today. Right? That is the context you should think about this. So bringing together domain experts to explore the art of the possible, to define the art of the desirable, and to turn it into reality. That's what our innovation story is all about. Our purpose corporately to bring things up to date is aligned beautifully with that philosophy. This is, in fact, BT's purpose and ambition. All my BT colleagues could recite this. Our purpose is we connect for good. So we should be interested in future networks, shouldn't we? And all that can mean. Our ambition is bold because ambition should be bold. Our ambition is to be the world's most trusted connector of people, devices and machines. That goes to the heart of the transformation that we see future networks enabling over the coming decade and goes to the heart of what this programme has been focused on. I'm going to stand back for two seconds and just give you a, 
a little bit of a, a sense of context. You know, where are we in the the 180 odd years of evolution of communications technology and all that that powers in for our societies? And I think, as the head of research for BT, that we stand on an amazing place full of huge opportunity, not just for companies like BT, but genuinely for citizens and for nations. And it's built on a series of ingredient technologies. And our challenge and the topic of the conversations that we would like you to have today is how do we harness that opportunity? The technologies are what? They are things like the being on the cusp of ultra connectivity, 4G, 5G, full fiber. Uh, narrowband IoT, low power wireless connectivity. We are instrumenting everything, aren't we? We are connecting everything and instrumenting it. The advances in computer storage and the cost point associated with storage allows us not only to connect things, but to harvest data and store it. Advances in AI, machine learning and disciplines such as that allow us not only to store things, but to analyze things, to divine things, to pull out insight from that data. Those are the sort of the raw potential ingredients. What that can lead to for society, we believe, is a transformation in just about everything. The way you park your car, because it will, you know, where the parking space is, when you should enter a rubbish bin because it will be instrumented. You don't go around collecting empty rubbish bins. You collect ones just before they overfit, they over, over spill. Connecting ourselves so we can live happier, safer lives in our homes. Connecting our logistics and transport systems so we can drive greater efficiency, polluting less, everything. And you could all do the speech, I'm sure, on this call. That is the potential. And that is the sort of the vision, the thing that we uh, are currently wanting to explore. How do we turn that opportunity into a reality? To do that, you answer questions like this, because these are the route to harnessing that potential. That potential is so broad, it, it can't be done in a traditional left to right innovation. It's not good enough to say, let's get with some, some university folk and then let's do some work in a lab work and we'll define a product and launch it. That's just not how it's going to work. To turn that opportunity to reality, it's got to be about deep collaboration because we need to bring domain experts together. You know, we know a lot about networks and 5G, not so much about health and uh, medicine. So we collaborate with clinicians, we collaborate with uh, health and social care people. The revolution in agriculture. Well, we know a lot about communications and AI and data and stuff like that. Not so much about farming. We need to collaborate. So this is the sort of world that we need. And to be able to collaborate and learn in that way, we need an infrastructure that's capable of doing it. So these are some of the things that this program has been exploring. How do we pick up the pace? How do we actually move quicker? How do we get that culture of experimentation and market discovery to really work? How do we express things in customer language? You know, not, you know, the techno babble that <laughs> very often I and many of my friends on this call fall into. How do we actually get into a, a world where we can communicate? How do we run business level processes in business language, not technical language? How do we increase the automation to be able to harness some of this AI to safely, securely, ethically deliver on some of the promise? And how do we create people? How do we enable people to create value? These are some of the topics that will allow us to take move from vision to, to reality and benefit for, for all. One of the things that we need to have in our mind as we do that is I just described a world where we move from connectivity, which is already part of critical national infrastructure, isn't it? My goodness, we've all just learned how important networks are to allow us to continue functioning as a society, but to a world where all that stuff above the network is equally important. As we move to a digital economy, as we move to an economy where just about everything requires on the insight that we're gleaning from the infrastructures that we deploy, my goodness, doesn't it become critical national infrastructure? And if you're in that business, again, that's a domain expertise. There are men and women on this call who spend their life 24 seven, not them, BT doesn't run people 24 seven, but them and their colleagues running stuff 24 seven to keep the lights on safely, securely 365 days a year. This is critical national infrastructure. It's at the heart of the success of future nations. So not to put any pressure on anybody here that this is important, but it is when well, we've got to continue to invest. An important point that comes out of that is that success in this endeavor 
can lead not only to commercial success for companies like BT, but actually, actually national competitiveness. So this is a very important program. If you're going to go after that sort of ambition, you need friends. And I've already said you need discovery science to do that. The place we turn to in this country is our universities. BT's got lots of universities. This is uh, relations with lots of unis. This is a, a beautiful picture of Pembroke College, Cambridge, our oldest strategic academic partner. Uh, we work with about 40 odd universities, uh, mostly in the UK, but many around the world as well. And as I said earlier, I'm delighted that four of those leading universities are uh, on this on this uh, this call. And I'll get name check them in just a mo. Um, working with academia to bridge that gap between discovery science plot what we call translational research and applied research into crystallizing real value and this program was actually architected by the, the parties in the UK who fund science to assist in that translational process. This is under the banner of something called a, a prosperity partnership program which is specifically designed to bring together large research active organizations and UK leading universities. Uh, the bodies that fund science in the UK are UKRI, uh, UK Research and Innovation, and the particular council that funds research that in the domain, I mean, we're interested in many domains, but the main domain that we're interested in is the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council. And this is an EPSRC programme that brings together uh, these universities, U the University of Cambridge, University of Lancaster, uh, University of Surrey and the University of Bristol. And you're going to hear from those during during the day with the objectives that you can see here, which is all about linking that little triangle of mine, linking new knowledge to economic and societal value for the nation and, of course, the partners who participate. Um, so what are the key strategic drivers? Well, I've touched on some of them and I'll, or we'll, we'll build this slide in a moment. These are some of the things that are at the heart of the programme that you're going to be hearing about and learning about today. Convergence. Convergence of technologies, convergence of markets, you know, up and down the stack, to use the parlance that some of my, my BT colleagues might might uh, might get. Converging things, keeping us ahead in terms of that UK critical national infrastructure. At its heart is the idea that we're moving to a converged digital infrastructure. Our belief is the nation that can essentially be first to understand what that really means. Well, that means in the wild, in the real world, not only can benefit companies like BT and our partners and our customers or our citizens, but can actually benefit the nation in terms of its economic prosperity. In short, there's sort of export potential from the sort of new knowledge and um, applied research that we're trying to drive here. And this is all about creating that platform for ever more dynamic uh, in innovation, which is what the market needs. And these are some of the things that you're going to hear about. Network functions virtualization. Many of you know what that is. It's kind of the softwareization of our communications infrastructure. You will also know that BT was a, is, has been a leader in this. We wrote the seminal paper in this area in uh, 2012 and have been working out how you go from that brilliant idea to a brilliant performant outcome in the in the in the intervening period. And this is at the heart of the work that BT is now doing with our cloud network. 5G is on here. You will know that BT is in the vanguard globally of launching 5G and the BT EE brands were first to launch in this country. And it's all ahead of us. It's going to be a lot more than just about faster mobile broadband. Uh, and really, this program is really trying to get around what that um, what that might mean. Autonomics. Uh, taking all that amazing AI and using it as a way to improve things. We're passionate believers in human in the loop AI. So uh, this is about how do we get the best out of humans and the capabilities of new software techniques. Our IP core that we're building, um, really harnessing that other form of convergence to deliver benefit for customers. Digital twins, many of you will know this is all about those cyber physical systems. Uh, how do you model those? How do you model them so you can uh, audit what's going on? You can actually look at what happened. You can understand what happened. You can run scenarios uh, to work out what might happen and understand what the best design criteria are. And you can also predict what's going to happen. And a very powerful concept that's um, that's certainly getting a lot of traction in the world of research, uh, applied and discovery, is what can you do with federated digital twins? If you can bring together these software representations of real physical systems and then connect them 
what opportunity can that open up for you? And of course, any true digital twin involves humans because we are always in the loop one way or another. And culture and roles is therefore as an important an element of this whole dynamic. It's not good enough to just think I'll model the bits and the bobs and the physical hardware. We've got to think about the whole rounded system and we're in it. So that's an important part of the, uh, the research that's been going on and that you will hear about as well. So these are some of the questions that you're going to be exploring. What does it mean for customers, for operations? Um, you know, what does it mean for business? What does it mean for our colleagues? This is a request. Hopefully you're getting from me that this is about bringing domain experts together. It's actually a national challenge, this. And this is sort of an this is an example of us trying to rise to a challenge. We are world leading in discovery science. Some businesses have a strong history in applied or translational science and research. And BT is one of them. And this is part of us extending that model because we need the expertise of the various parties on this call from BT colleagues to help with that next step of translating and making sure these technological capabilities, these system demonstrators can land in the real world and deliver benefit. That is what this is all about. So please engage. I'm sorry this isn't physical. You know, I'd love to have you all at the labs and I will welcome you to the labs as soon as we can. But please lean in, engage, ask questions, challenge, because it really is about getting a conversation going. And I think with that, Steve, um, given time, I'll pass over to you to get into the conference uh, proper and uh, wish you all well. And thank you all for joining. Uh, so thanks very much and have a, have a great, a great day.